Welcome to Two Wheels, and doesn't time fly, eh? Moves on at a fair old rate. Doesn't seem like five minutes since we were last here, but it is in fact 12 months, yes. But now we're back at Birmingham's NEC. That's right, because this is the International Motorcycle and Scooter Show. And big scooters are big news, as my little friend Wayne has been finding out. We, hello, will you come up here? Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Now, I can't blame you having a look at the front there. It's quite impressive. It's very, very big. In fact, it looks just like a big touring bike, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It is a big bike. It's actually a big scooter, commonly known as a super scooter. It's the new machine from Yamaha, 500 cc's. It is different, different in the way they've constructed it, the way the frame is, the way the engine is and so on. From the outside here, it does look like a nice regular scooter, two big seats, big fairing, big screen but it does look very, very different underneath. And here's one we made earlier. Come and have a look at this. God, they'll pinch anything nowadays, won't they, eh? It is very, very different in every shape and form. First thing they've done is put the engine right where an engine lives on a motorbike, at the front and in the middle there, okay? That helps with the suspension and the run of the machine, makes it handle just like an original motorcycle. You might ask, therefore, is how does the suspension work? Well, that's down in the bottom, underneath, right underneath. You'll never get a chance to see it. It's well hidden under there. It doesn't sit upright and bounce up and down like that. It's laid down. Very clever, very technical. And what's different about this machine, it's actually the drive mechanism, which on a lot of scooters is a belt. On this one, it's a chain. So it is very, very similar to a modern motorcycle, but the scooter format. Serious bit of touring device, lovely bit of kit, and very, very technical. So that would imagine, I would imagine, everybody would think, therefore, very, very costly. Well, just like all the other Yamahas that have been launched here at the show, nobody knows. We've no idea how much it's going to be. But I believe that in discussions, for the benefit of you, they're trying to keep the cost as low as possible to you, the consumer. So when it does come out in the near future, then you will get to know how much it is. But for the moment, I can't tell you. MV Augusta, lusted after by many, and I rode a standard one earlier in the year, but now we have the SPR, and in fact, a Senna version. Both bikes share a lot of components. The engine's up from 126 brake to 140 brake. It's got an optional track day exhaust with it, close ratio gearbox, carbon fibre bits and pieces, 15,500 for the SPR, 17,000 for the identical spec, but red and black Senna. The Senna is a limited edition one, they're only going to make 300 and only 18 for the UK. So get your order in now. But if you want to be really different, you've got to go for the MV Brutali Oro. And just look at this, I mean the first thing that strikes you is the tank when you're sitting on the bike with these big extensions either side, big MV badges, but it's really something different, not the ordinary MV at all. Also what you've got, which is really going to be distinctive, is this headlamp at the front. It looks as though it's dribbled down, looks as though it's been melted. Didn't like it in the photos, but for real, I must say, it looks pretty funky and completely different to anything else. Carbon fiber guard, big chunky forks there. At the back here, the exhaust system, unlike the F4 where it comes from under the seat, they've tandemed these two up here, so it sweeps up, two slash cup pipes there. All looks very different. And because this is the Oro version, it's got the magnesium swing arm, single-sided at this side, all gold, and the gold frame bits. Looks pretty trick, doesn't it? Mind you, it's going to cost you 20,000 quid, and there's only 300 of them, 15 for the UK. Roll up, roll up, get your leaflets on the CBR 600. Look at this, they got me working, honestly. This is a leaflet on the new CBR 600. There's two new models, and Paul's over there looking at me now, and I fancy a go. In fact, I can't wait to have a go. Yes, you wish, don't you, Wayne? He's a lot safer behind that counter, believe me. But this is the new CBR 600F in two versions now, a stock model and a sport model. This is the stock version, and the obvious changes are, well, it looks a lot more aggressive than the old model. I think a lot more racy, a lot more sporty. Gone are the big vacuum cleaner pipes that we had on the old one. Remember them things that came out the front that I hated? They've gone, but we've still got air intakes. In fact, bigger air intakes than before, but they're now incorporated into the fairing, so it looks Looks, just looks a lot better and they're pulling more air in we've now got a bigger air box and would you believe in the air box there are actually air reservoirs to cope with when you snap the throttle open you need more air so the reservoirs will pump the air in to the engine and it should develop about 109 brake horsepower and that's where you'll notice the biggest change when you ride the new CBR 600 on the throttle because for the first time now it's fuel injected yes all very very high tech other changes well mechanical changes are minor really some changes to the frame up here 
the headstock is a bit beefier, bigger and stronger than it was before. And down at the back of the engine, the engine mountings again, bigger, beefier and a bit stronger. And an interesting thing that I read in the, in the Honda blurb is that the exhaust is supposed to be quieter than it was before. I don't quite understand that because most people who buy this type of bike will, will just whip that off within the first few weeks and stick a race can on it because everybody wants to make noise, it seems. So uh, they've made it quieter. I'm sure there's good reason for it. But the biggest change and the thing that Honda are happiest about is the weight saving because they've saved a lot of weight now on this new model and where we had steel before we've now got aluminium in the uh, fork internals. We've got aluminium replacing steel and even down as far as the calipers. The pistons in the calipers, they were steel before, they're now aluminium. But uh, there it is, that's the stock model, that'll cost you £6,900 or thereabouts on the road. But the other version is here, just beside it. This is the sport version, £450 more. So for £450 you get a different paint job, this black and red sort of SP1 style racy paint job. And the biggest change, obvious change, is the seat unit, two piece sort of racing style seat unit now so it's certainly not going to be as comfortable as that other one with the uh, with the dual seat so less comfort on that and that's really it i'll tell you what else you get for 450 pound extra you get stronger valve springs <laughs> however you're going to notice that i don't know and uh, strangely you get an extra tooth on the race rocket and that's about it but you pay more you pay 450 pound more and you don't even get a centre stand. Centre stand on the stock model, only a side stand on the sport. So there we have it now, two versions of the new CBR 600. Take your pick. Now, as we've already said, this is in fact the motorcycle and scooter show. So we're gonna bring you some scooters. Now, you might recognize this one. That's if you were watching the program early on in the year. And that is this Kimco, this Kimco 125 Ego. I road tested it. In fact, Paul and I argued over who was road testing it because in actual fact, we both love it. This little silver version, 125, is at £2,500. Good value for money. To better that, now is available a 250 version. I'll show it you. Come over here. And that's this baby. Looks just the same because it is very much just the same. Lovely bit of kit. Not quite a super scooter. Not a big one. Just a little bigger than the average little one. The 50ccs, the 100s. 250cc engine goes very very quick indeed good value for money would you believe for less than three thousand quid now i like my bikes big but just look at this boss hoss absolutely enormous thing the tank is nearly three foot across it weighs half a ton but it doesn't feel like it five and a half liter chevy v8 motor absolutely enormous it'll do 200 miles an hour on the bonneville salt flats but i don't think you're going to do that in the uk but isn't it absolutely enormous? Look at the radiator, you could use that in your lounge for God's sake. But it's costing you about £43,000, but not this one, because this one's sold. Now here's a bike that's loved by many, yes, true, but also, fair to say, hated by a lot of people, the Honda Goldwing. People say they're too big, they're too heavy, they're big, they're clumsy, they're not fast, they don't handle. All of those things completely wrong, totally untrue. Believe me, I'm speaking from experience. I've done a lot of miles on these and they're a smashing bike. This is the new model here now at the show. Massively different, massive being the operative word because engine size has gone up, would you believe, to 1800 cc's, in fact, 1832 cc's. Still the same engine configuration as the previous 1500 model, flat six cylinder, but it's now fuel injected, so promises to be even smoother than before. Most of the changes aren't apparent, well, apart from the looks, obviously, it looks a bit different, but it's still instantly recognizable as a gold wing. You'll see it going down the road, the new one, and you won't go, what's that, is that one of them new wings? Straight away you'll say, it's a gold wing, but it's the new one. So, sort of the same but different, if that makes sense. But all the changes aren't obvious until you look close, and if you look down here, Different frame for the first time now on a gold wing. Look at this twin spar aluminium frame, eh? So we're going sporty on the old wing now. Single sided swing arm under there, and the radiator that used to sit behind the front mud guard that everybody put the fairy lights round. That's gone, and that's up here now. In fact, there's two there's one there, and there's one on the other side. Side mounted radiator, sort of VTR style. Very, very nice. Still got all the usual luggage space, and I just want to show you this. Watch this here. What's that pannier down there? If you're familiar with the old wing, you'll know that when you release the panniers underneath this top box, they go juk -juk -juk, and they, they uh, flap like that. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Even a hydraulic strut there now to, uh, to damp it as it opens. Very, very nice. Some lovely touches. All the usual goodies on the, on the gold wing that you'd expect. Dual linked CBS braking system, ABS, cruise control, reverse gear. But that's a little bit different now because on the old 1500s, you'll know if you've owned one that the reverse gear is on the lever on the left-hand side of the tank here, and you pull the lever, 
that engages the starter motor, turns it backwards and lets you go backwards. Now all that's gone. Simple, you just press a button up there on the right hand handlebar. Electric reverse gear, eh? What will they think of next? The usual beautiful dashboard, audio system, central locking on there, uh, electrically adjusted headlights, it's even got memories for the suspension setting. This bike has got everything you'll ever need in a motorcycle, believe me. And because it's a Goldwing, very important point is the alternator. The alternator on this throws out 1100 watts. So Goldwing owners will need that because they cover the bikes very often with fairy lights. So just think of all the bits and pieces you can light up with 1100 watts of power coming out of your alternator. And being a Goldwing, of course, there's sure to be a huge catalogue, be about this thick, of aftermarket accessories. So a new one like this, stock model, on the road, somewhere about, we're not sure yet, but we think around about £13,500. But with all the bits you can bolt on it, believe me, that'll be just the start. Now, you often get concept bikes at bike shows, but this isn't a concept, this is for real. This is the Munch Mammoth, or Mammoth, as the Germans would say. Two litre engine, 260 brake horsepower, would you believe? It's going to cost you around about 50 grand, but what a monster. But there's a lot of technology in there. And boy, oh boy, you'd be the only one on the block with that one. Do you know what? It's thirsty work, this, uh, this TV presenting like, this show business thing. So I'm going to go find myself a bar, or a cafe maybe, <laughs> and, uh, and you can join us after the break for more from the Motorcycle Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the NEC. Time now to see what Wayne's been up to. This is the Peugeot Speed Fight. Now you might well have seen these before because they've been out a little while. Although this is the Speed Fight 2 and this particular one is 100ccs and most of them are 50ccs. Most of them because in actual fact they are the biggest selling scooter and have been for a couple of years now. But I don't suppose you're interested to know what's underneath these plastics and this seat. Well, I don't care if you're not because you're going to show you anyway. This is what you get underneath. It's quite a technical little thing, actually, to be honest with you. There's your little engine. In this case, 49cc. Nice little piston popping up and down. We've got our alternator here, which generates 12 volts of battery power. And of course, most scoots are electric start anyway, so you need your 12 volts. Some scoots are in fuel injection, some scoots are only a little carburetor. Your drive system isn't a chain like it is on a normal motorcycle. Not on most, anyway. Most of them have belt drive. And that's the belt hidden down here. And it's on two little wheel pulleys. And what happens is, as you accelerate and go a little quicker, that changes its gearing. Not like on a push bike where it goes onto cogs, just literally on like a cone. And as you go a little quicker, the gearing alters. So in actual fact, you're in the right gear at the right time, nearly all the time. And that makes your little 50cc very, very efficient. Obviously, that is the wheel, chopped in half, and we've got a brake drum here. Some do have a disc. And then, of course, you've got the big black exhaust system. Simple as that. That is what you get for your money. In the case of the Speed Fight 2 100cc, that's 2,000 quid. And at the moment, they're doing special offers on insurance for 100 pounds, obviously, certain conditions. Kawasaki had some new additions to their retro family of muscle bikes. There's the ZRX 1200R on an Eddie Dawson theme from the early 80s. There's the standard ZRX 1200. And then there's the half-fed ZRX 1200S. But even more retro, of course, was the 60s style W650. But that's more in the Bonneville mould. And at £4,795, it just slightly undercuts it. No, sorry girls, no, I can't do it. I'm fe Look, I've done enough phone numbers and things. I'm not doing it, I'm sorry. My apologies, but no, be off with you. Go on, leave me alone. Oh, cameraman, cameraman, hello, hello. Come here, for goodness sake. God, I don't know. I've had pe signing autographs, phone numbers. I've given loads of phone numbers out, most of them to fellas. And they've given me a job at the Yamaha stand here, giving brochures out. And I reckon they've got an ulterior motive. I actually think it's to scare the kids away so they don't mess about with the bikes. And Paul, of course, he gets the lovely jobs to do, and he reckons he's got a big one. I have indeed got a big one. I'm talking about motorbikes, of course, in the shape of this, the new FJR 1300 from Yamaha. So where does this sit in the bike world? Well, it's a sort of sports tourer type thing, I suppose you'd say. But if you look at the world of sports tourers, you've got things like Honda's VFR 800 touring ability, 
Triumph Sprint ST. Again, good touring ability, but there's certainly more on the sports side of things. And then you've got things like Honda's Pan-European and BMW's K1200 LT, more dedicated tourers. Well, this is supposed to sit in the middle of those two. It's got the touring ability, good touring ability, and it's got some performance as well, so it's reasonably sporty. So if it's a tourer, what does it need? Well, it needs to be comfortable. Yes, it is. I've been sat here for ages, actually, having a rest, and it's a lovely, comfortable seat. Nice, big, padded, dual seat there as well. The bars, nice position. They're not low, not tucked down. They're nice and high, and you're not tipped forward, so you're not going to get too much backache, I shouldn't think. Little button here for your electrically adjusted screen, so it doesn't work at the moment because it's not switched on, but that goes up and down, so you can adjust that for the optimum wind protection when you're doing them hundreds and hundreds of miles across Europe. It's got to have luggage carrying capacity as well. Well, we've got no panniers fitted as standard. There's one on the stand here behind me there with a nice set of colour-coded panniers. Looks very smart. Fuel tank is metal, so you can keep your magnetic tank bags. You can stick them on there. Big fuel tank as well on this, 25 litres, so you're not going to be pulling up for fuel too often on this. It should be good for a lot of touring ability. You could put a top box on the back there. You could load it up, no problem at all. Also, it's the sporty side of things, so it needs some performance. Well. 1300 cc's, nice big smooth motor with loads of torque, nice power delivery, 141 brake horsepower, should be good for 150 miles an hour plus, no problem at all. Now I remember Yamaha's FJ1200 was around many years ago and there's still a few cruising around the continents now. Great tourer, a lot of touring ability, but it was big, it was loud, it was heavy and it was a bit cumbersome. Well on this, they managed to shed loads and loads of weight and it's now down to quite a respectable 237 kilograms. The big question, as with everything here at the show, is when can I have one? Well, it's going to be next year. And how much is it going to cost me? Well, again, I can't find out. Yamaha don't know. They won't disclose the price. But it's my guess, and this is only my guess, that it should cost you somewhere close to about £8,500. Here they am again, giving me leaflets out, in this case, on the Triumph stand. Now, we've given this job of this new machine to a certain gentleman who remembers them first time round. Who else could it be? My uncle Jeff. <laughs> now, many, many years ago, I used to press my nose up against the local dealer's shop window and look at the Triumph Bonneville and lusted after one of these. But this is a bit different. This is the new one. Brand new Bonneville, but still following a lot of the traditional themes, at least as far as styling is concerned. But this one isn't a 650cc, as was the first one. This is 790cc, twin cylinder, Still got the old 360 degree style crank, which always gave British bikes that distinctive sound. It's got twin carbs, of course. It's double overhead cam, the same as any modern bike, but it's got a separate swinging arm, shock absorbers, exposed front forks, and particularly the paint scheme on the tank is virtually identical to the old Bonneville. And they've all these little styling cues, the timing chest, the gearbox and whatnot, all follows the original Bonneville. Very clever, and I'm sure it's gonna go down a bump, especially stateside. I've heard of cut price machinery, but this is going a bit far. Look at this. But this is to demonstrate something. And I've got to admit, I'm not going to hold on to this for too long because these are heated grips. What's so special about that, you might add? Well, I tell you, 50 quid normally for a pair of heated grips for good ones. These come free of charge. You know what's really surprising about a 50 pound heated grips that come free of charge? I'll show you on this little bike over here. Follow me, please, sir. This is a little wasp, and can you believe those heated grips come as standard on this bike and it's only 999 quid. Now you'll know in the past if you've watched some of my road tests, especially the road tests I've done on these machines, CCM models, and I've tested just about everything that they've ever made, I've been slagging them off because I've been saying five or six thousand pounds for a bike, you get all this technology and you don't get a neutral light. Because remember I says we can put a man on the moon, I think I said, but you can't put a neutral light in a CCM. Well, Forget all that, I take it all back, because I've been moaning, and they've actually put a neutral light on every model, so every 2001 CCR model has now got a neutral light, which I think is great. Just goes to show, if you're not happy with something, tell them, people do listen to you, and they do take notice, and they put it right. So well done to CCM. Motor Hispania. Bet you never heard of that one before, have you? And I bet you'll never guess where it's made. Yeah, Spain, of course it is. Seville in Spain. And, I've got to admit, I'm normally a little bit sort of about Spanish engineering and workmanship. Well, I tell you what, they have definitely excelled with this little baby. This is a little RX. It's a 50cc, would you believe? So 16-year-old people can use it. 
And I have been reliably informed that in actual fact there's an awful lot of interest from lady users, young girls who fancy getting on a proper motorcycle when they're 16 years old rather than a scooter. Well, let me just point out a few things that I've noticed. First of all, obviously, it's overall appearance. It's beautiful. It's nicely finished off in the fairing here, and all the top unit here, I mean, it's everything that a 916 is. But just check these footrests out here. The engineering of this and the way this is produced, if this was an aftermarket product, it'd be a couple of hundred quid's worth. And that is all on a bike, in a blue, or in this lovely yellow here, that is already inclined to do a stopper. Would you believe, at £2,195. So, value for money, yes, it definitely is. Now, fancy a jet bike? You can certainly burn off your mates on that. Got a Rolls-Royce gas turbine engine in that one. But something more practical for the road is a Tornado, a Benelli Tornado. This is the latest version, the finished version of the one that's actually going to go on sale. You can buy one of these for about 22 and a half. It's going to go on internet sale in November. And this is it, final version, the three-cylinder, very much like Triumph. They hope to go world superbike racing with it as well but uh, it looks the business, very unusual styling. The back here, a couple of fans for the radiator, that strange triple piped exhaust there, but uh, certainly a bit of a stunner. Well, I've found it, I've definitely found it, look at this. This year's prize winner for the worst possible color scheme has to go to the BMW C1, look at that. Frost, metallic frost blue at that, not just frost blue, metallic frost blue and Kalahari, Kalahari, Kalahari yellow. It's so bad it makes you speak funny. What were they thinking of? I don't know. But before we slag this C1 off completely, I've got to show you this executive version, eh? How's this for the ultimate top box? And there'll be lots more from this year's show on two wheels next week, including Suzuki's new GSX-R1000, Yamaha's R1-powered phaser, and Wayne finds the ultimate protective bike jacket. It's inflatable.